church family, we began our One New Man Bible study last week, chapter one, and I think the conversation went really well. And church family, I am going to continue to pray that this upcoming week is incredibly fruitful for us. We learned the importance of this topic. We learned what is racial reconciliation, why it's important, and how it's related to our mission as God's people. What we're going to learn in chapter two is uh, that the reason for intentional acts of racism and unintentional biases is sin. So this is what I want you to do, church family. I want you to look at chapter two and notice that he breaks uh, the chapter into two sections, basically. Sin affects our walk with God and it affects our walk with one another. I want you to discuss one or two passages in each section. I want you to really dive deep into these passages of scripture and describe in our handout how these passages describe the effects of sin. How do these passages communicate the effect of sin in our walk with God and in our relationship to one another. I want to briefly talk about it, Genesis 3, just so I can give you a paradigm of what I'll be looking for on Sunday. In Genesis 3, this is when Adam and Eve fall. They eat the fruit from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, and they usher into the, to the world all forms of sin, brokenness, and disease. And notice first how this sin affects Adam and Eve's relationship with God. You'll learn in verse 9, that God calls to Adam and says, where are you? And he said, I heard the sound of you in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked and I hid myself. Notice first that sin affects our walk with God and that it produces fear. It produces shame. And this fear and this shame because of sin causes us to hide from God. It doesn't cause us naturally to run to God. In order for us to run to God, it takes an act of grace. In our sin, we run from God because we are sinners and thus afraid and ashamed. And notice in verse 24 that the text says, He drove out the man, and at the east of the Garden of Eden, he placed the cherubim and a flaming sword that turned every way to guard the way to the tree of life. Notice that God has to drive his people from his presence and protect them from the garden, which they were meant to protect. Sin affects our walk with God. It is devastating so that we die physically and we die spiritually, that all forms of fear and shame now operate in our walk with God. And notice how sin affects Adam and Eve's relationship with one another. Notice in verse 12, God asks in verse 11, did you be eaten of the tree? And Adam says, the woman whom you gave to be with me, she gave me fruit of the tree and I ate. Notice that sin causes Adam to throw his wife under the judgment of God. He was meant to protect her and he does not stand up to protect her. He gives all forms of excuses and wants for her rather to fall under the judgment of God than him. This is cowardice, church family. Sin affects our relationship with God so that all forms of fear and shame are operative in our walk with God. And sin affects our relationship with one another. Well, we would rather prize self-preservation than love for one another. So church family, this is what I want you to do. I want you to look at a few of these passages and go in depth and discover how sin affects our walk with God and with one another. And I am so looking forward to discussing this with you on Sunday night and to continue to apply these truths to our life so that we could be a church where we experience the unity that we have in Christ through faith amid God-glorifying diversity for the glory of God, for the salvation of the lost. This is what I hope to see, church family, and we will see. I'm looking forward to us learning more and us embracing these truths with greater passion. I'll see you on Sunday, church family.